What if there was a way to get a vaccine without getting a shot? With dissolvable microneedle vaccine patches, there is. These vaccines consist of tiny structures, known as microneedles, that dissolve when they enter the skin, releasing an antigen that then triggers an immune response. Recently, scientists developed a printer for microneedle vaccine patches that uses ink containing mRNA nanoparticles targeting a component of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. What are the potential applications for vaccine delivery? Welcome to Microbial Minutes, the American Society for Microbiology's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. I'm Madeline Barron, science communication specialist at ASM. Microneedle vaccines are not needles in the normal way we think of them. Rather, they consist of tiny pyramidal or conical structures clustered on postage stamp-sized patches. There are various types of microneedle vaccines that differ in composition and delivery mechanism. For the dissolvable variety, the microneedles contain an antigen, such as an mRNA encoding a viral protein, and once they enter the skin, begin to dissolve, releasing the antigen. Immune cells in the skin then interact with the antigen and mount a protective response. Microneedle vaccine patches have been explored for a range of pathogens and infections, including influenza, hepatitis B, rabies, and others. And there are several reasons why these tiny patches have garnered a fair bit of attention. For one, they are less painful than vaccines administered via intramuscular injection. They also do not spark people's fear of needles, which can be a barrier to vaccination. Moreover, compared to intramuscular vaccines, microneedle patches do not require administration by a healthcare professional, but may be self-administered, increasing their usability. In addition, microneedle vaccine patches can be formulated to remain shelf-stable. This is a distinct benefit in the context of mRNA lipid nanoparticle vaccines, which have been integral in the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. mRNA vaccines are highly unstable and must be stored at extremely cold temperatures. This makes delivery to areas lacking robust cold chain compatible storage and transport resources a challenge. The ability to produce effective vaccines that circumvent the requirement for those resources would be a huge advancement. However, there are challenges associated with microneedle vaccine patches that limit their widespread development and application. Along with barriers like sterility and ensuring consistent dosage of a vaccine, scalability is a key obstacle. Currently, most microneedle vaccine patches are handmade one by one, making for a labor-intensive process with more room for error. But wouldn't it be great if there is a way to automate the process to produce many microneedle vaccine patches at once? And that's where this study, published in Nature Biotechnology, comes into play. Scientists created a printer for mRNA microneedle vaccine patches against SARS-CoV-2, with potential for generating vaccines against other pathogens as well. How did they do it? Well, for a printer to print, it needs ink. Here, the ink consisted of a polymer blend used to make microneedles and mRNA lipid nanoparticles, which essentially consist of mRNA encoding a component of a pathogen that is then shrouded in a sphere of lipid molecules. We talk a little bit more about the mechanisms of mRNA lipid nanoparticle vaccines in a previous Microbial Minutes, if you want to check that out. In this study, the mRNA in the nanoparticles encoded a receptor binding domain of the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2. As shown in this video, during printing, the ink is dispensed onto a mold with a vacuum. The vacuum sucks the ink into the microneedle molds. The ink is then dried, leading to microneedles about 1,500 micrometers or 1.5 millimeters tall. The printer produced 100 microneedle vaccine patches in 48 hours, a big step up for making a single patch at a time, and there are various ways the printer could be optimized to allow for more patches to be produced. Of course, printing the vaccines is one thing, but do they actually work? The scientists administered vaccine patches to the footpad of mice and, 28 days later, followed up with another microneedle patch as a booster dose. Serum was collected from the animals every two weeks to assess concentration of antibodies that bind to the region of the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein used in the vaccine ink. For comparison, a separate group of mice was vaccinated with the mRNA lipid nanoparticles via intramuscular injection. Three weeks post-boost, both groups showed similar concentration of antibodies. However, there were differences in the temporal dynamics of the antibody response. Whereas it took about one week for mice receiving the intramuscular vaccine to respond, that is, produce high levels of antibodies, it took about three weeks for the microneedle vaccine patch group to reach similar antibody concentrations. According to the scientists, this is expected given the vaccine is slowly dissolving from a solid material into the skin. 
This contrasts with the quick release of the liquid vaccine suspension during intramuscular delivery, which can quickly rev up the immune system. Still, the slower revving up of the immune system may have some benefits. Intramuscular vaccines often trigger side effects, like soreness at the ejection site, headaches, and more, as the immune system kicks into gear. Microneedle patches deliver vaccines without a big inflammatory response, which can limit these effects. In any case, the mRNA microneedle patches yielded, according to the researchers, a robust immune response within a feasible amount of time after administration. Now, as mentioned, when it comes to mRNA vaccines, stability is a key concern. To test the long-term stability of the microneedle vaccine patches, the researchers used ink containing RNA encoding the luminescent protein luciferase. They then stored the vaccine patches at either 4 degrees Celsius or 25 degrees Celsius, room temperature, for up to six months. After this time, they applied the vaccine patches to mice and, 24 hours later, imaged the mice for luminescence. Greater luminescence meant the mRNA in the vaccine was still viable and capable of producing protein, suggesting greater stability. Compared to a liquid suspension, the microneedle vaccine patches remained potent and stable after six months of storage at either temperature, whereas the potency of the liquid suspension decreased over time. Indeed, the microneedle vaccine patches stored at room temperature for three months elicited the same antibody response compared to fresh patches, further pointing to their long-term efficacy in a variety of storage conditions. So what are the main points we discussed today? Before we get into that, make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more microbial minutes. Okay, what did we learn? Scientists created a printer to generate SARS-CoV-2 mRNA microneedle vaccine patches. These mRNA vaccines triggered a similarly robust antibody response compared to those administered intramuscularly, though there were temporal differences in the responses between the vaccines that warrant further investigation. Importantly, because they were thermostable, these microneedle vaccine patches provide a basis for overcoming cold chain issues associated with traditional vaccines, especially mRNA vaccines used for COVID-19, perhaps allowing for greater dissemination and use. With that in mind, the microneedle vaccine printer technology itself could be a game changer, providing a foundation for high throughput production of microneedle vaccine patches. There are several aspects of the printer that would need to be optimized for use of the vaccines in humans. However, the authors note that the printer, or multiple printers, could be deployed where and when needed to fight disease outbreaks, not just for SARS-CoV-2, but other diseases like Ebola, polio, and more. All it would take would be swapping out the ink. That's all for today's Microbial Minutes. I'm Madeline Barron. As always, I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank Ray Ortega for production, and I'll talk to you soon.